Section B, airports. So we'll take a glance to see, uh, obviously most of us, uh, airplane flyers, airplane pilots, we have to use the runway. And the runway has a uh, specified traffic pattern. Many times, huh? many times that traffic pattern altitude or that TPA will be published. And if it's not published, we go with kind of a standard uh, single engine aircraft, 800 multi engine, 1,000, turbojet, 1,500. That's what we know, we kind of assume that's the case. We also assume left hand traffic, like my guys who are flying right here. Now, this is left hand traffic. Um, also, on this diagram, on this little slide, I have a segmented circle. All right, so that describes why these pilots are flying left-hand traffic. Left-hand traffic means I'm making left turns, all right? but it can be confusing when we approach the airport because you're approaching from possibly a side that doesn't look like the left side, or you're approaching from, man, I'm going to make a right-hand turn as I enter, and then it becomes left traffic. So you have to really be good at visualizing. Say, okay, how am I going to visualize my entry? How do I visualize uh, what left traffic means? Okay, or how do I visualize what right traffic means? And if my guys were flying in an opposite direction, they would be making right-hand turns. Okay? That would be considered right traffic. Wow, surprise, surprise. On the test, they're going to offer you one of these segmented circles. Okay? That segmented circle has segmented means dashed. It's the FAA's term for dashed. That dashed circle right there includes a wind direction indicator on the inside and traffic pattern indicators on the outside. So here my wind direction indicator could be one of three things. We're going to get into those one of three different things here in a little while. But this one looks like it might be a tetrahedron because it's pointing in the direction where my airplanes are flying, where my airplanes are taking off. Now, I want the wind to, be com to come from the front of the aircraft as I take off and land. That's for better ground speed. Right? I want the minimum amount of ground speed so that I don't tear the tires up on taking off and landing. Okay? So you've taken off and landing upwind. This wind direction indicator is a tetrahedron, which shows that. Now, if it were a wind sock, it would look a little something more like this. I would have a circle connected to a sock like so, and it will indicate the approximate wind direction and speed. Okay? So that would be a wind sock. Now we also have a wind T. We have a wind T here at Fort Lauderdale Executive. It's really cool. Have you seen it? It's in the middle. The wind T looks just like this. It has a T that's somewhat similar to the shape of an aircraft, and it points in the direction that your aircraft would point if you were landing. So all three of these wind direction indicators are valid. Those are all three wind direction indicators that you could see. You'll see the tetrahedron on the test, but that's about the only place you'll ever see one. Okay? Uh, so wind T, wind sock, tetrahedron. Now, the traffic pattern indicators. This tells me that I have left traffic if I'm landing on runway 27. But I have right traffic if I'm landing on runway 9er. 9er, right? All right, so here. How do I know that? The, wind, the traffic pattern indicators. They indicate that I'm using the south side of that airport for my traffic pattern. If neither one of these existed, then I would make left traffic for both runways. I'd make left traffic here for runway 27. Then if they were landing on runway 9, I would make left traffic for runway 9. Again, I'm making left turns. From the pilot's point of view, I'm making left-hand turns. Just like that. But this airport has the traffic pattern indicators, so I stay on the south side. I stay on this side of that runway. Okay? Normally, 
you'll have traffic pattern indicators because we have either a noise sensitive area or some terrain feature that exists here that pilots are encouraged to stay away from. Mountain. Could be. Yeah, I'm encouraged to stay away from that. Right. On entry, I want to enter at approximately a 45 degree angle, midfield, downwind. Okay? I'm landing and taking off upwind. In other words, the wind is coming from this direction. All right? On this leg, I'm flying crosswind. So even though my airplane is pointing here in the little diagram, right? Your aircraft needs to point more like this as you're flying across. Because now I'm going to make that ground track, but my aircraft is heading in this direction. It's facing that direction. The wind is moving it and causing it to make this nice 90 degree line. While I'm on this leg, I'm considered downwind. That's my maximum ground speed. This is the area where you complete your checklist. And pilots say, I have no time to complete the checklist there. It's ridiculous. Well, I probably know why, because you have a wind coming from where? Here? Okay, fantastic. How many people look at their attitude indicator and make a 90 degree turn? Oh, of course, I got to make a 90 degree turn. It's a 90 degree turn. No, you don't have to make a 90 degree heading change. You have to make a 90 degree change in your ground track. So what do pilots do? Well, I took off from 27, so that must mean I have to turn to 180. Completely wrong. What does the wind do to that pilot? The wind makes them go over here. Now they make their turn. It's impossible to do a checklist. It's time for me to land. See? That's what happens. So instead, what we like to do is make a wind correction angle, fly your rectangular pattern, level off from that climb. You have forever to make that before landing check. Get out the checklist, look at it, verify that everything's complete, put it back in your map pouch, and set up and land. 